Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so my name's Vicky. My background is working on NHS projects in Somerset, which focus on health and well-being at both um, of people and also at the community level. Um, and that's involved working in GP practices, offering one-to-one -one support to patients in a health coaching type role, when I was working with Health Connections Mendip, and also group work, sort of self-management courses for people with long-term health conditions. And also doing a lot of work in the community, revolving, um, supporting people to increase their knowledge, skills, and confidence around healthy lifestyles. Um, I'm also a volunteer health walk leader at my local GP practice, um, and I organise free creating health events, a little bit similar to what we've tried to do today. Um, and I'm also a recent convert to the park running phenomena, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. So what I'm hoping to do today is to share with you some of the work and projects I've been involved in, which I think demonstrate ways that support people towards better metabolic health, even if it doesn't seem like it's a direct link. So um, what I've noticed um, over the years while I've been working in primary care, that there's been a real shift in focus from the um, moving away from that traditional biomedical approach to um, managing people's health and thinking about things in a much more rounded view, thinking of us as people set in the wider context of our lives and one that acknowledges the wider determinants of health as well, which drive health inequality. And I noticed that while providing one-to-one -one support to patients, it was really obvious to me that their um, beliefs and wider life events affected how much they were able to address their immediate health concerns. And I think this has been touched on a little bit already by um, Emily and Peter. Um, so it's well known that health information alone is ineffective um, and behavior change is a difficult process. It requires sustained motivation and support, but I think that's where the key is. If you can um, find out what motivates the person, um, that you're speaking to and what gives their life meaning, you've kind of got a hook whereby you can work on um, solutions together and sort of formulate a plan as to how people are going to move, for move forward and address some of their health concerns. And a tool which has really helped me to do that um, is the Human 5 framework, which some of you may have seen. It's a tool that Campbell developed and has been um, refining over the last few years. And I found it to be a really useful tool when I'm working with patients, both in a one-to-one -one setting and also in a group setting. So um, for those of you who haven't seen this, this is just, um, it's a tool that you can use uh, to facilitate the conversation. And whether you're a health coach, whether it's in the eight minute GP consultation, whether you're a consultant working with a patient, if you're trying to find a way to guide that conversation and to enable the patient to talk more openly about different aspects of their lives and what may be going wrong with them, uh, this is a really good um, plan to help you to do that. Uh, so it facilitates discussions around the things that impact on people's lives and their health, and it breaks aspects of their lives down into broad topics. So the topics here you can see, I think just about, we've got movement, mind, nutrition, body, um, and world. And what this does is it helps enable patients to identify and acknowledge their problems and concerns, but it also asks a fundamental question, and that is what matters to me. Um, and once you've kind of found out what the answer is to that question, um, working with that patient in these person-centered approaches that we are all using now, um, you can start thinking about solutions and actions to work towards um, problem solving. And uh, this factor actually, this bit about what matters to me, and this has clearly reached um, national importance now because it's a part of a national health service campaign and um, every year now they have a what matters to you day um, and this is where they're trying to encourage people to have better conversations um, with their patients and really try and improve relations, um, build better understanding between each other so you can work towards a shared purpose. I've also used this tool um, when I've been working, um, doing self-management courses in the community, and I found that it's the community setting, when you can move the patients out of that clinical environment and back into the community where we live, that I've seen the most behaviour, uh, most powerful behaviour change. So what I'm just going to cover with you over the next few minutes now is have a chat to you about the Creating Health Roadshow events, um, health walks, park run, men's sheds, and then just touch a little bit on um, politics as well, which we haven't really talked about today. So the Creating Health Roadshows, uh, we've been running these for over a year now in different towns in Mendip. 
And the um, aim of the, the roadshows is really is about bringing the metabolic health message to a wider audience. The aim is to inform and inspire people about achieving good metabolic health and to give people the confidence to overcome challenges they may face with type 2 diabetes or achieving a healthy weight. It's very much a community event in every sense of the word. Um, and you can see what we're trying to do is make sure there's lots of information for people um, by having up-to-date nutritional information from a clinician. Uh, we have a testimonial from a patient, similar in the way that Steve today has shared his story. That is very powerful for um, people to hear other people's testimonials. And by sharing um, good stories, it can be a real motivator. Um, we have plenty of time to answer questions. And then we try and inspire people by offering them a tasty, colourful and healthy and easy to replicate buffet, which you'll get to get to try a little bit later on this afternoon. Um, and we also give people the opportunity to try, try some gentle exercise. So we have a guy who lives locally, gives a free Tai Chi session for people to get involved with. And we really see this as an enabling um, opportunity. Uh, so we provide um, information from local community organisations and services, exactly what we've tried to do today. So I don't know if you've noticed, but we've got Joe here from Zing, we've got Matt here from Spark, and we've got Katrina here as well from Engage. And we've also got Phil up the back from Somerset Local Foods. And what we do is we invite members of the community groups along so that people can chat to them and find out um, the support that's available for them in the community to enable them to um, change their behaviour. Um, and oh, we also raffle off um, some cooking equipment as well and uh, give out some recipe books. So I think with the Creating Health events, there's no doubt about it that the talk is the draw. People come because they want to hear Campbell speak about the topic, but it's the other stuff that goes on around it that really puts in, um, makes it an extra special thing. Um, and that's why we have such good feedback about these talks. So yeah, so here's the gang. In fact, most of the people who are in that picture are here today. So. Um, Thank you, everyone, for the um, support you give us at, at these events. We couldn't do them without you. Um, so I'm just going to come and have a chat to you about my experience as a, a walk leader. So there's over 1,800 free, short and medium walks that leave um, places in um, England every week. They're led by volunteers. We're lucky that in Somerset, many of them leave from local GP practices. And I think these are a gift on your doorstep. Um, this is something that is just provided for you in your community. And if you're not already um, leading health walks or organising health walks from your GP practice, I strongly recommend that you um, look into going, looking to see how you can facilitate that happening. So um, I asked them, um, uh, the walkers who come on my Friday walk, why do they um, join their local health walk? And there's some, you know, uh, reasons that we would expect, such as um, feeling isolated and not fit, wanting to get fitter, wanting to meet other people, um, managing a long-term health condition, and getting lots of benefits from that. Uh, but there was one of our team actually emailed me his answers because he felt it was really important to share with us why he joined the Health Walk scheme. And although it's not specifically about pre-diabetes or diabetes, I think what this quote illustrates is there are many things that spin off when people decide to do something um, positive for their health. And um, so I'm just going to read this quote out to you. So as you can see, the benefits have been so much more than I was expecting. It's given me the confidence to become a health walk leader myself and I've gone on to be heavily involved with the carnival. In turn, it has given me the experience and knowledge that I can take into future life situations and a working environment. So I think of health walks as a catalyst for change. Um, and just from our one walk that I started nearly four years ago, uh, we have a large number who walk every Friday. We go up the tour every three months. And for some people, they've never been up the tour in Glastonbury, and they've lived there for 20 years. So it really can empower people to try things that they maybe wouldn't have tried before. We've even got a spin-off group who walk on a Wednesday together and do things like go to the pub and do really long walks as well. Um, and it's from the team who and the friends that I've made through the Health Walk that the Creating Health Roadshows have really been supported. Um, and those people have joined us today to help us put on these types of events. So I just want to talk to you a little bit about Park Run as well. Have you all heard of Park Run? Has anybody not heard of Park Run? Does anybody go to Park Run? 
Okay, that's a few. Good. If you've never been to Park Run, I strongly recommend on a Saturday morning you get up and go and have a look and see what all the fuss is about because this is another phenomena that is just sweeping the country at the moment and, in fact, uh, many countries across the world. This is a free event at 9 o'clock on a Saturday morning where people can go along and walk, run or jog for five miles. It's hugely supported by volunteers and um, it's, it's transformational. I think... Um, my experience of, of Park Run, really, I'd have to think about Carl here. So Carl's my partner, and uh, we've never done any formal exercise together other than walking a lot in the 18 years we've been together. Park Run has now become a massive part of Carl's life. So if any of you want to know about what motivates people to Park Run, have a chat to Carl in the break, and he'll be able to share to you just why it's such an amazing thing to get involved in. And you don't have to be fit to join in. You don't have to be a certain size to join in. And some people... Health walks aren't for them, but Parkrun is going to tick the box. So if you're looking at ways of signposting your patients to that wider community support, um, just give them a nudge and let them know about their nearest Parkrun. Men's sheds. So the reason I put men's sheds on here is it may not seem like a really direct link, but there's plenty of evidence showing that um, loneliness and isolation can have a devastating effect on people's health and maybe exacerbate long-term health conditions or even continue towards them. And that is the same for type 2 diabetes as well. So there is some um, evidence to show that um, people who are lonely and isolated are more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. And the fantastic thing about um, men's sheds is it's a community space for men to come together over a shared um, topic, a shared vision. And um, they can, it's an opportunity to have a chat, overcome some of that loneliness and isolation they may be feeling, and um, generally just kind of re-engage with the community. You don't have to be lonely and isolated to join a men's shed. And plenty of people never reach that lonely and isolated stage because they've managed to keep those social interactions going their whole lives. But I helped to set up a men's shed in street about a year ago, and it took over six months for the guys to find a venue and another six months to um, actually realise the vision, get the renovations done and start using it as a shed. But for that whole year, they were meeting on a regular basis. They were plotting and scheming, making plans, drinking tea and improving their health and well-being. So it's another really great community initiative out there that you can um, signpost people to. Because sometimes directly asking people about their diabetes and um, coming at it from a strong clinical view may not always bring about the result that you want. And just getting people to have the opportunity to make interactions with other people and live as human beings, the, our health naturally improves. And that could be the same for metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes as well. Now, I think it would be remiss not to just touch ever so slightly on um, some of the wider issues about people's um, health and what contributes to poor health in this country. So we've had a look at what um, uh, things that people can do as an individual and what they can do in their community, but let's not forget that there's a role here for policies and regulatory frameworks too. Um, it should be a lot easier to make healthy food choices. It shouldn't be so hard to eat well and to have an active life and to be healthy and happy. And um, as Peter touched on, talking about ultra-processed food, ultra foods, currently ultra-processed and fast foods are cheap, they're easily available, and they're formulated to be tasty, not healthy. Um, there's conflicting dietary advice. Um, in some neighbourhoods, healthier food is not available and it's not affordable. There's a perception that healthier foods are more expensive, and not all neighbourhoods support being active outside. So the reason I just want to touch on this is that um, this is a society problem and it needs a society to solve the problems so we as individuals and citizens have a role to play in agitating for better policies better availability of food and um, better structures to reduce um, health inequalities so what can we take away from this today um, so I think it's important to think what's important to the person you are working with what matters to them could you organise a community health event for your town? And if you'd like 
help with that, just come and have a chat to us and we'll let you know how straightforward it is to organise a, a good community event where you can really spread the message to lots of people. Um, reach out to your local community initiatives, find out about your Walking for Health schemes, get them at your GP practice if you're not already um, running them there, become a health walk leader, um, find out about your park run, check it out, signpost your patients to it and see if there's a men's shed going on in your area now. And um, finally, I just want to say campaign for better food for all. And that's it. Thank you. As I listen to that, not only does it bring in all these other extremely important parts of, of how we create health for individuals and populations, but also uh, really reminds me that uh, we never have to sit around waiting for permission to do anything. Uh, if we can see a way we can improve the world, we can just go and get on with it. We don't need to wait, wait for a, uh, uh, a strategy to written from above. Just, just go and do.